Hey, Kim, how are you? Hey, good, how are you? Good, thanks. You know, I'm just wondering, do we got one more myth in there that we can take a look at? I bet we do, hang All on. All right. Ah, oh, we have a good one. Oh, they're always good, aren't they? <laughs> um, all right, so this customer wants to know if it's possible to retain polar acids under reverse phase mobile phase conditions. Jeez, another another myth on polars. It seems like we get a lot of these. We do, you know, people like to pick the ones that are challenging to retain, right? I, sure. I think it comes from a lot of people don't want to go to hillock chromatography. And we've talked a lot about hillock chromatography in the past. Yep. Um, so, you know, you have hillock chromatography. We've talked about columns designed to retain polar analytes in the right, past. Like our T3. Right. Um, but we haven't specifically addressed this question, which is polar acids. Yeah, yeah. You're 100% spot on. Mm -hmm. I mean, it all comes back to how do you make a polar compound, in this instance, a polar acid, retain on a non-polar surface? Um, you really have to try to promote or use some sort of secondary interactions because a hydrophobic surface is not going to want to hold on to a polar analyte. So you need a second kind of mechanism, I believe, to do this. What do you think? Yep. Yeah, I think that's the challenge. So we could try the mixed mode column that we have, right? Yep. So it's designed with reverse phase functionality and it has functionality on it with has a um, designed to retain acids by anion exchange. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so we could test that and see what it looks like. Maybe compare it to a standard reverse phase column as well. Yeah, I think we benchmarked this against our HSST3, which is widely known yeah. for retaining polar. Yep. I think that'd be a fair comparison. Mm -hmm. um, we'll just need a couple of compounds, you know, something that's hydrophobic and something that's a, a polar acid. Yep. Um, if we get those together, we'll run some experiments and see what it looks like. Sounds good. Let's set it up. Okay, great. So Kim, in looking for some compounds, which is never easy to do, um, I kind of stumbled across a couple compounds that are found in some common over-the-counter antihistamines. So it's uh, chlorophenaramine and malleate. Okay. And you can see by the structures that I'm showing here, they're really different. Um, the malleate is very polar. It has a log P of minus 0.5. Oh, wow, yeah. Yeah, very polar. And the uh, chlorophenaramine is very hydrophobic. Its log P is about 3.4. So I think those are two compounds that we can use for our experiments. Again, one's a small polar acid, and the other one's very hydrophobic. I think that'll tell us a lot about the retention mechanism under reverse phase conditions. All right, what about the mobile phase? What do you think we should use? Yeah, great question. You know, as we kind of discussed in an earlier episode, to promote polar retention, we probably should use 100% aqueous. Um, so we'll be able to do that. Um, we'll set it up at low pH, so pH three with 10 millimolar ammonium formate for both columns. Um, we'll let it rip, and we'll see what the data looks like. All right. So Kim, it's always cool to run some experiments, especially for polars, which are typically challenging for a lot of our customers. You know, how does it look? Like, how does the data look when we ran these two compounds? Again, the polar acid, the malleate on the HSST3 versus the uh, malleate on the mixed mode column. I'm glad you asked, JT. If we look at the HSST3 column, we see that we get very good retention for the chlorpheniramine, but not really retention at all for the polar acid malleate. I think we can expect this to actually happen because the T3 chemistry is actually just a C18 bonding. It's standard reverse phase. Yeah, that's right, Kim. I mean, that polar compound is not retained at all, comes right out in the void. And I think this is what customers see when they try to analyze these types of analytes on a reverse phase column. Yep. So let's look at what happens when we look at the reverse phase anion exchange column. When we look at the results on the Atlantis Premier BEHC18 anion exchange column, we actually see that we get good retention for both compounds. And in fact, the malleate is actually more retained than the chlorpheniramine. Yeah, wow, you can really see that. It must be due to the anion exchange capabilities of that sorbent. Absolutely, so having both functionalities on the column is really key to getting good retention for both compounds. Exactly. So JT, yep. once again, we ran a lot of data. Yep. And this customer specifically was asking if it's possible to retain polar acids under reverse phase, mobile phase conditions. How do you want to call it? I, it it's trusted. It's really trusted. Um, you just have to make sure you're using the right stationary phase. You know, a classic reverse phase C18, something that's hydrophobic, that's not going to work. You're right. going to want a stationary phase, like a mixed mode anion exchange, 
that has another retention mechanism embedded into that to be able to retain those polar acids. Absolutely. Why don't you write it up? I will. If you'd like your question to be answered on a future episode, please feel free to email us at trustyourscience at waters.com.